Hey guys, so I'm getting ready to start painting. Uh, it's been really crappy here. I live in upstate New York, so uh, basically, um, yeah, it's been crappy lately. It's been raining like three, four days in a row, five days in a row, and the humidity levels has been really high. So now I've actually got a decent day. Yesterday was decent, and I was kind of hoping today was going to be decent. So I actually got the wheels primed yesterday. Today I'm going to get the doors painted, and uh, as long as the doors you know turn out as good as I want them to I'm gonna go ahead and start moving on to all the other parts that I have already prepped that are up in my attic so I'll start pulling parts and uh, go from there but uh, this might be a little long video but basically I'm gonna try and show you guys what's entailed on cutting doors in and uh, doing a paint job so uh, start to finish in case you guys have never seen it done this is it all right so uh, Basically, I've got the uh, the doors all uh, primed. They're all ready to go. I went ahead and wet sand the uh, the doors with 400 grit and um, got them all nice and smooth, prepped, wiped down. Um, all I got to do is take the tack rag to it. Tack rag is sticky cloth. What it does, it's you know it's really sticky, and you wipe it across. It takes all the the dust off. So I'm gonna do that. Um, I've already got my base already mixed up which is going to be the the white the super white and we're going to spray that down the thing is the super white is there's no tints in it it's actually just straight white there's no yellow there's no blacks no you know no additives no reds nothing it's just straight white so outside this car it really is an eye squinter you know it's uh it's white you know but uh also it's one of the hardest paint jobs that uh, you have to go across because of so much dust and dirt gets in it that if you lay clear coat over it, it's there, guys. It's there until I sand the, the panel down and redo it because you're going to see that dirt underneath the clear. So the trick is to tack cloth it, get it clean, and uh, make sure I, I have my area as clean as possible and I can get the clear down. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one door at a time so that I can acclimate my, uh, my quality, basically keep my quality control. So uh, I'm going to try this door and see how today goes. And uh, as long as today goes well, I'm going to keep on spraying and uh, basically put more content out there for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and tack rag this. I'm going to mix up my paint. It's already, you know, in the cup ready to go. And uh, put some paint on here. You always want to mix your paint up really good. Make sure it's mixed very well. Same thing with your clear coat. You know, you can't technically you can't over mix it. You know, you really want to mix it well. It's a Sada Jet. It's an NR2000. Okay, these guys, these are filters. These are your paint filters. You want to put that in there so it strains any kind of, you know, impurities, clumps, dirt, anything that's like in the paint, dust, you know, stuff like that. So generally, you just put it right on top, pour it right in, let it filter the paint. You want the paint to be as clean as possible. Alright guys, I'm going to slap on my respirator, so I'm not really going to be able to talk until I pull my respirator down, but uh, for now, see how it goes. I don't have my exhaust fans on right now, 
uh, just so there's not a big humming noise. I'm just going to do this one door. It's probably going to fog out a little bit, but I think it should be fine just to do the door. You guys can get an idea of what it's like for, you know, to paint these things. Okay, so you guys don't want to put it on too wet. What you want to do is just kind of put on, you know, a basic first coat. You just straight across, one single pass. And uh, you basically, this, this paint that I use, it covers very well. I could do a one coat pass because it, it's pretty relatively thick paint. I use a Transtar paint. It's a no mix paint. And uh, I kind of fell in love with it with the last job that I was at. It was the paint they used. So I think I'm going to end up sticking with that. Not real sure yet. Uh, it depends if I come across some other base coat that has coverage like this. But uh, as you can see, I mean, it covers extremely well. That was just one coat. I prefer to have at least two to three coats, maybe two and a half coats. But when I say two and a half coats, I mean a milk coat. On the second coat, I'm going to go over this. When this flashes and starts to dry a little bit more, you'll see it, it kind of dulls out instead of being shiny. When it's shiny, it's wet. As it dulls, you know that it's drying. Now, with this Transtar base, it's really nice because I literally could let this base dry and I have up to seven days before I can even put a clear on it, which is awesome. I have all that time and a lot of time that I literally could have a pinstriper come in and if they're late and they don't get here for another three, four days from now, they can pinstripe it and I can still put clear on it and there's no issues. It'll still adhere. That's what's really nice about the paint. And there's a lot of base coats out there that do the same. But, uh, you know, I mean, I like this product, and, uh, you know, th again, that's basically how it's done. Sorry I'm rambling a lot. I'm just trying to explain as much as I can, as fast as I can. Um, I can see now it's kind of starting to flash off a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go over it with uh, one more coat. And uh, on my milk coat, I'll put one more, just like I did, and then uh, I'm going to do kind of like a little dusting and a feathering. That's my half coat. So I guarantee I have my coverage in all the areas that I need, especially the edges. Always make sure you get your edges, guys. All right, guys. Second coat. By the milk coat this is when I go in and I make sure I have all my coverage because now that was my second coat now here's my half coat so I guarantee I have it perfect
And you do this while it's still wet, guys, or else it's not going to milk in, all right? If it's dry, you're going to have that dry shot look. You won't see it when I clear it, but if you're trying to just go with a base and that's it with that flat look, flat paint, you know, obviously you better put it on wet so that when it dries, it's all one solid color and you don't have any striping of dry shots. And that's it guys, that's, that's the money shot. So uh, that's how you lay the base down. Um, you really don't want to run the base because if you run the base, you're gonna have to wet sand that run out. Uh, if you put any clear over it, you're, you're not gonna be able to wet sand it out after. You can wet sand a clear run out and you can buff it and it's gone. But if you have a run underneath the clear, it's locked in there underneath the clear guys. You're not gonna be able to get to it. You're not gonna be able to repair it. So if you guys are painting for the first time, just understand that if you have a run, it's not the end of the world. Just let it dry, let it cure up. And uh, what I like to do guys, if it's like right then and there, and if it, you know, back in my days where I would run base, um, just wipe it off. Go like with some reducer, you know, the reducer you use to just mix that paint up and cut the paint down. Just put it on a rag and just go wipe it across. Take your run right out blow it off and take a little bit of wet sandpaper and go in there and make everything nice and textured and smooth where you just wiped it. Wipe it with some prep salt, clean it up, and you can go in there and dust some base back in there, guys. It's real clean, it's real fast instead of having to wait for that run to dry and cure because then it's, it's time, guys. You know, in this, in this game, money is time. So, uh, yeah, I'll come back and uh, show you guys what it's like uh, to clear this thing. I'm going to let this thing flash off. I'm going to give it another probably 10, 15 minutes and then uh, tack it back down. But in the meanwhile, I'm going to mix up my clear coat and uh, go at it. Okay, so we're going to try this camera angle a little bit better. And, uh, you know, that way you guys can get a better idea of what I'm doing right now. Um, got my clear all mixed up. It's 4 to 1 ratio. Four parts of clear, one part of hardener. Again, it's just the train start clear. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the first coat down, let that flash a little bit, and then uh, lay on the second coat, and that's that's done. That means that this door has been cut in. I can now bake it. I can bring over my infrared baking lamp and set it right on it. We'll bake the clear for about 10-15 minutes each end. That way they get at least 15 you know minutes of bake time. And then I can actually flip this door over because it's all hard, and I can actually paint the other side. But uh, before I do that, obviously I gotta sand out the primer and uh, prep it. But I'm gonna go ahead and let this bake out for probably like a day or so. And uh, just for the sheer fact that I wanna get other, you know, parts painted today. So uh, instead of doing some sanding and whatnot, I've already got parts ready for paint. I'm gonna do some painting today because so far so good. As long as uh, God willing, everything's going great. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw on another glove, mine just tore, and uh, I'm going to lay this clear out. I've already got it in the gun. I've already ran the tack rag over this. I've already made sure that the paint is covered perfectly. I've got paint coverage everywhere. That's the number one thing, guys. As soon as it dries, it actually could be a little bit more transparent than you think. Um, so that's why, you know, I do kind of like a milk coat. It's a little extra. I, I, I kind of go over and milk it in. But uh, I have had it to where it's all completely flashed off and dried and it's been transparent. I could still had to go back in and put more base on it. Sometimes I've had to put three to four coats. I've even had to put five coats on some, you know, paints, depending on who makes it, you know, and how viscous and whatnot it is and how, you know, thin. So um, I'm gonna throw a glove on, put some clear on it, show you how it's done.
Okay, with clear coat, you want to have more air pressure, and the SADA is already a high air pressure gun anyways. They usually run like, I don't know, 20, 20 pounds, I guess, 19, 20 pounds. It's usually what I run. Uh, my regular is actually broken, so I just go off of my ear. I've been doing it for so long, and I know how to lay it down. So 75% uh, overlap, just like base. You run your, your, your uh, pattern all the way across, nice clean all the way across. Go up and 75% overlap, up 75% overlap. And you want to go at such speed to where you're not putting down too much product and leaving a run. And uh, not going too fast to where you're leaving a dry shot. Make sure you do your edges. I usually do them first. And that's it. So you guys get the idea. Uh, that's one coat. I'm gonna go ahead and let that flash and for about five minutes or so. I do put the first coat on pretty wet, guys. That's how I spray. I spray with, uh, excuse me, spray with uh, high volume pressure and uh, you know a lot of pressure because I'm able to lay it flat. The flatter you get it the better. So I, I crank my air pressure up and I can put a lot more product on that way. It tends to flash a lot faster and I've just got my techniques and how I do things. So, you know, just because I'm going really fast when I clear, guys, don't try and do it like I do. I've just been doing it for so long. I'm production. Um, but uh, I mean, get your techniques down until you can do that. And a lot of guys, they do better when they go fast. So, I mean, learn what you can do. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video, guys. You guys can get an idea. I'm like choking on this clear coat right now. I'm going to put my mask back on. So if you guys like what you see, comment below. You know, and get an idea. So uh, I'm going to get that GC8 done. Subscribe, comment, hit the notifications. Come on, guys. Help me out. Support. Thanks, guys. Bye.